Vladimir Putin's campaign of violence would not be possible if it weren't for this person, Russian oligarch Yevgeny Prigozhin, who's believed to be financing the Wagner Group, the man most commonly known for being the sausage king of St. Petersburg and Putin's chef, has extensive ties to the Russian Ministry of Defense, which made him a natural choice for managing Putin's covert forces. Now, you might recognize the name because he was sanctioned multiple times by the U.S. Treasury for financing the Internet Research Agency, better known as the Internet Troll Factory, which, is, which interfered in U.S. elections in 2016 and 2018. Naturally, he has denied any connection to the Wagner Group. Joining me now is Amy McKinnon, national security and intelligence reporter for foreign policy, and Malcolm Nance, MSNBC counterterrorism and intelligence analyst and author of the upcoming book, They Want to Kill Americans, The Malicious, Terrorist, and Deranged Ideology of the Trump Insurgency. Thank you for being here, Ms. McKinnon. Welcome to the show. Tell us more about this group, because I think people who've paid attention, and very not all Americans have, unfortunately, to the things that are going on in places like Libya and Madagascar and Mali and Mozambique know who they are. Mm -hmm. But they actually got their start basically in Ukraine. Can you just talk about that? Sure. So the Wagner Group, as we know it, first uh, popped up in Ukraine in 2014, where we know from statements from, from Western governments, from reporting by journalists, and from the soldiers themselves that took selfies while they were there, that the Russian military was operating in Ukraine. But of course, the Kremlin tried to maintain this veneer of plausible deniability. They've constantly denied that there are Russian troops there. And so the Wagner Group was a very convenient way to bolster their forces there, but to, to claim no knowledge, to claim that these were, quote, little green men that had no insignia on them, that they had nothing to do with them. But what we do know about the Wagner Group is that they are very closely enmeshed with the Russian Ministry of Defense, with Russian intelligence, and the U.S. government has even called them a proxy for the, for the uh, Russian military. So there's a very strong relationship there. And they've been known, as you say, to pop up in Syria and across Africa now to advance the Kremlin's strategic objectives in these countries, but whilst maintaining this plausible deniability so that when things go wrong, which they sometimes do for this group, that they can wash their hands and say, well, this was this was nothing to do with us. Well, let me ask you, where, where do they come from? Because it, the thing is, if they're operating in all of these different countries, sort of one of the theories um, has been that it's easier for Russians to use proxy forces who don't have familial connections in Ukraine because they'll kill at will. They have no chill when it comes to killing people, whereas Russian forces might be hesitant because they might, in some cases, literally be killing their cousins. Is that the idea? And where, where do they come from? Well, the vast majority of the Wagner forces, as far as we know, um, are also Russian themselves. They tend to be a little bit older than your average conscript. They're kind of in their late 30s and 40s. They come from smaller cities across Russia where, where times are hard, where times are tough, and people are looking for money. And Wagner pays pretty handsomely. This, the fighters earn anywhere between two and $3,000, which is big money each month in Russia. And so a lot of them are just guys that are ex-military, that have these skills, that are looking to, looking to make money. They sound like some of the mercenaries, Malcolm, that we've seen, you know, there are groups in the United States that I guess have the same kind of uh, background. How could they theoretically be used? Because it does seem that the Russian sort of force is, is, is kind of spent in the sense that they can get around the country, wreak a lot of havoc, but they can't seem to take and hold, in, especially the capital, um, or hold a lot of territory. How might they use these forces? Well, you have to understand, the Russians thought up this concept, or Yevgeny Prigozhin thought up this concept, to give Russia their version of Blackwater, right? That's the uh, Eric Prince-led mercenary group or, that was operating out of North Carolina, then moved to China, United Arab Emirates, where I was living near Eric Prince for some time. And I'd seen some of these people, it's the, the precursors to, to Wagner. Uh, you know, full disclosure, I worked in Iraq at one point in the, the late 2010s, and uh, we provided support to Luke Oil. And there was this militia-styled group that was providing deeper security for Luke Oil than the regular security guards. Very tactical, very heavy. Um, and they kept popping up in other places. Libya, for example, which happened after 2014. These are deniability forces. And what they really are, and proxy is a good word, but what they really are is they are subcontractors to the Russian Military Intelligence Agency, the GRU. This allows them to also cross-connect with the SVR, the Russian Intelligence Agency, their clandestine service, and to just operate out in public. Uh, for example, that one, one interesting thing, they not only modeled themselves after Blackwater, they also modeled themselves after one of the more famous 
um, 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 uh, mercenary groups that I actually had to do operations against once called Executive Outcomes in Sierra Leone. And this was a group that the movie Blood Diamond sort of uh, mimics, where they were literally holding sections of the country hostage and mining for diamonds. And they're doing that now in the Democratic Republic of Congo. They somehow have enchanted the government of Mali to get rid of the French army and shift over to PMC Wagner. This is money, guns, and uh, a lot of strategic influence by Russia. However, didn't work out so well for them in Syria when they tried to take on 12 special forces soldiers and lost 250 Russians dead because we know how to play this game and they're just amateurs. Uh, let me ask you then, what is the sort of worst case scenario, Amy? I mean, if they're operating there and they don't have rules that they have to work, you know, live by, as most militaries do, we know about the Russian military, what's the worst case scenario of what they could do? Well, we've seen this most starkly uh, in the Central African Republic, where they've been accused by UN monitoring groups of just the most gross atrocities of... of of assaults, of murders, of kidnapping. Um, and so, yes, I mean, they operate without regard for, for human rights or for, or, for the law, or for the laws of war. And so it's deeply concerning. I mean, the Russian military itself, the Russian proper military, is at the moment bombing civilian sites in, as we know, in, in, in Russia. But I think, you know, the concerning thing about the Wagner group is they're, you know, they're extrajudicial. They don't formally exist. There's no accountability for them. And so that raises serious questions about what they may do. And if they do, how, how do you hold a group like this accountable when the state that they come from claims no knowledge of them? And, and what could be hey, Joy, done about them then, Malcolm? Point? Please do. Yeah, well, I just want to point out that right now the city of Kiev is in a 36-hour lockdown. And that's because it's not Russian spetsnaz, the special forces that are trying to infiltrate these cities. It's guys who are, came in deep cover as civilians, could have been there months ago, who are being called saboteurs that are out marking places, dropping these little cell phone-styled uh, marking devices for, Ukraine, uh, for the Russian artillery. And the, the city of Kiev is on a manhunt for them. And they found the last few groups that had been doing this. These guys are acting like those Hollywood characters, you know, in the Jason Bourne movies that are chasing Jason Bourne. And they all view them, you know, they view themselves as these what we call guns forward type mercenaries, right? They're in it for the big game. They are not actually very good. I saw their operations in Libya. I was in Libya. Uh, and, and then they were funded by the, you know, the United Arab Emirates and other forces to, to come and take the, do these operations. And the Libyans handed it to them. Yeah, it is frightening. Uh, I really appreciate you both being here because we need to understand what's happening uh, full scale uh, in this region. Uh, Amy McKinnon, Malcolm Nance, thank you both very much.